to Complete Health with Dr. Mike Rogers. I'm April, your host. November is American Diabetes Awareness Month, and we're here today to discuss the seventh leading cause of death in the United States. The statistics are frightening. About 10% of all Americans have diabetes, and over 25% of Americans 65 and older have diabetes, and it's estimated that over 33% of the population over 18 has prediabetes. It contributes to many diseases, including a dental component that we will discuss today. Good morning, Dr. Rogers. Good morning, April. How are you? I'm wonderful. Can you start today by explaining to our listeners what diabetes is? In simple terms, it's a group of diseases that result in too much blood, uh, too much sugar circulating in your bloodstream. Are there different types of diabetes? Yes, there are. Uh, Pretty much there's five primary groups of diabetes or types of diabetes. For example, type 1. This is where your immune system attacks uh, or destroys the insulin-producing cells in your pancreas. So the pancreas produces little or no insulin. uh, And this type usually appears in adolescence and was formerly known as juvenile diabetes. But it can happen at any age. What are the risk factors for type 1 diabetes? Family history plays a part. Autoantibodies. What's that? Well, those are antibodies that your body produces that break down or destroy the cells within the pancreas. Um, Environmental factors and geography. So you mean where I live affects whether I can have diabetes or not? Yeah. For example, Scandinavian, the Scandinavian population, uh, have a higher increase in in type 1 diabetes than most. Okay. You mentioned the pancreas produces little or no insulin. What what is the pancreas and what is its job and why is it so important? Well, the pancreas is an organ about 6 inches long located behind your stomach. Its purpose is to help digestion and to produce insulin to lower blood sugar. The, the two main vital uh, functions are exocrine function that helps in digestion and endocrine function that regulates your blood, blood sugars. Okay. You mentioned there are five types of diabetes, and you gave us the first one. The second is type 2. With this form, the cells of your body become resistant to the action of insulin, or your pancreas is unable to make enough insulin causing sugar to build in your bloodstream. How do I know if I have type 2 diabetes? Well, symptoms usually occur or develop very slowly. So many times it's missed in its early stages or even just overlooked uh, because it takes so long. Uh, Some of the symptoms usually are increased thirst uh, and frequent urination, increased hunger, weight loss, fatigue, blurred vision, slow healing and frequent infections, areas of darkened skin, elevated blood pressure, and changes in your periodontal health are all symptoms. So what are the risk factors? Uh, Increased weight and obesity is a risk factor. Uh, Sedentary and active lifestyle plays a big part. High blood pressure, abnormal cholesterol and triglyceride levels, Uh, family history, age, race, Uh, Fat distribution on your body, meaning if it's around your waist or is it kind of added to your hips and thighs? Uh, If you had gestational diabetes while you were pregnant or if you have PCOS. So what are some of the complications of type 2 diabetes? Now that's a great question because it it, it can affect the healthier mouth, increasing likelihood of periodontal disease, And we will talk more about this in a little bit. But type 2 diabetes affects many major organs, including the heart, blood vessels, nerves, eyes, kidneys. Long-term complications develop gradually and can be disabling or even life-threatening. Wow, that sounds scary. Can you give us a little more detail? Sure. For example, diabetes increases the risk for heart and blood vessel problems, increasing the chance of heart attack, stroke, high blood pressure, coronary artery disease, atherosclerosis, which is hardening of the arteries. In the aspect of nerve damage or neuropathy, which it's called, 
uh, excess sugar can injure the, the walls of the tiny blood vessels that feed the nerves, especially in the legs, uh, which can cause tingling, numbness, burning. In men, this can also cause erectile dysfunction. In kidneys, kidney damage can occur. Uh, diabetes can damage the delicate filtering system of the kidneys and can lead to kidney failure or end-stage kidney disease requiring dialysis. Eye damage. Uh, diabetes can damage the, bl- the vessels, the blood vessels of the retina, uh, causing diabetic r- retinopathy, leading to cataracts and glaucoma. Foot damage due to poor circulation and blood flow. This can lead to cuts, blisters, infections, which could actually result long-term in, in amputations. Uh, and other conditions that are affected, uh, hearing impairment, skin conditions, depression, Alzheimer's disease, which we've covered a couple times with Dr. Chip Whitney uh, on our show, and a periodontal disease. Uh, gestational diabetes, increased blood sugar affecting pregnant women. This can affect uh, women's health during pregnancy uh, and along with the baby's health. And it can also predispose them to type 2 diabetes. Um, prediabetes is a condition where uh, the blood sugar is high, but it isn't high enough to be considered type 2 Type <laughs> type two diabetes. This type uh, can be reversed, and we're going to talk with our guest today about if we can do that and how we can do that um, with lifestyle changes. Um, insulin resistance: the cells of your body become resistant to the hormone uh, insulin, resulting in increased blood sugar. With this. If your pancreas can make enough insulin, your blood glucose levels can stay within the normal range, but it's not a good way to be. Uh, I didn't realize there were that many different types of diabetes. Can you tell our listeners what insulin is? uh, Insulin is a hormone that controls the blood sugar by moving it from the bloodstream into the cells throughout your body. It helps balance the blood glucose levels within a system. Thank you, Dr. Rogers. You're listening to Complete Health with Dr. Mike Rogers. When we come back, we will be joined by a special guest to further discuss this topic. Healthy teeth and gums for a lifetime? How important is it? At Complete Health Dentistry of Northeastern Pennsylvania, that is our focus. If your mouth isn't healthy, your body can be affected as well. Gum disease has been linked to heart attacks, strokes, and diabetes. And if your teeth and gums are in bad shape, it affects your ability to smile, eat, and live life to the fullest. You've worked hard. Isn't it time to take care of yourself? Turn to Dr. Michael Rogers at Complete Health Dentistry, where you and your health are our number one focus. Take time for your health. Call Complete Health Dentistry at 253-5000 and schedule your new patient experience today. See how we can help you feel and look better than you ever thought possible. Complete Health Dentistry. Visit us on the web at Complete Health Dentistry of NEPA.com. Welcome back to Complete Health with Dr. Mike Rogers. Dr. Rogers, as a dentist, why are you so passionate to talk about diabetes today? Well, it, our office name is Complete Health, and I truly believe that the mouth is the gateway to the rest of the body. And one of the things that we find is the the Bacteria in the mouth can create a systemic inflammation or a total body inflammation. When you add diabetes to the mix, which underlies so many, has its tentacles in so many different uh, major disease processes, it, it all kind of forms together and fits. In fact, I use the term that diabetes and periodontal disease or gum disease is bidirectional, meaning if you have uncontrolled periodontal disease and you're predisposed to diabetes, it's going to exacerbate the diabetes, make the periodontal disease worse. So your worsening gum disease is going to make controlling diabetes harder. Diabetes on the flip side increases blood sugar in in the blood. It also increases sugar in the saliva, which feeds those uh, pathogenic or the bad bacteria in your mouth making the periodontal disease worse. So this feeds off of each other. So it goes both ways. It goes Exactly. It goes both ways. And so 
it's harder to control diabetes. It's harder to control the periodontal disease. And it just, it spirals downward, you know, uh, with diabetes, it's harder to control infections and periodontal disease is an infection in your mouth, regardless of what you've heard. Oh, it's just a little bleeding. That's an infection. You don't have bleeding anywhere else on your body, but it's, it's not, it's, so it's not okay to have bleeding in your gums. When we have this bacteria, it's only one cell layer. All this bacteria in our mouth is only one cell layer away from your bloodstream. Those, those bacteria can penetrate into the bloodstream and create what's called an oral bacteremia, meaning the bacteria goes from your mouth into your bloodstream and can affect all other organs of the body. It's been shown to increase diabetes, Alzheimer's, heart attack, stroke, all cancers. All these things are affected by periodontal disease and exacerbated by diabetes. So reversing or, or eliminating diabetes, if you're on that path where the, the potential for diabetes is paramount. Also, other things that can be part of too much blood sugar or too much sugar in the saliva from diabetes is thrush, which is a fungal infection in the mouth. And just like bacteria, the, fung the fungi thrive on the glucose in the saliva, which can create other issues. Um, along with this, I know we've talked about in the past smoking, smoking and nicotine. Uh, smoking along with uncontrolled diabetes can worsen the severity of periodontal disease or periodontal infection. And it can increase the likelihood of bone loss, uh, tooth loss, uh, facial disfigurement, and as we were just talking about, thrush. So what are some of your main recommendations you give your patients with diabetes to avoid any of this from happening? If, if you smoke or chew, please stop. That's number one. Uh, two, brush two times a day at least. Uh, floss at least one time a day. Visit your dentist regularly, uh, not just when something hurts. Uh, you know, also visit your dentist at appropriate levels. If you are predisposed to diabetes or have systemic illnesses, the bacteria in the mouth can affect other things. And so just because your insurance company says you should be seen twice a year, you may need to be seen more frequently. So discuss that with, with us or, or whoever you see to make sure you're on the proper path for, for gum health to maintain your overall health. Um, it's your health and, you know, we're here to keep you healthy and help improve it. Thank you, Dr. Rogers. Um, it, I'd like to introduce our special guest. With us today is Carol Knayer. Carol is a registered dietitian. She's a certified diabetes educator. She's been with Wayne Memorial Hospital for 25 years and recently switched positions to a community health manager, and she's very passionate about diabetes education. Welcome, Carol, and congratulations on your new position. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here this morning. So, Carol, can you start by telling our listeners how our body deals with sugar and foods we eat? Uh, yes. You know, in regards to diabetes or even not diabetes, the normal process is, is when we eat food, um, you know, we talk about carbohydrates a lot, but some of your other foods uh, may have a little effect on your blood sugar, but mostly carbohydrates. Um, but when you eat those foods, um, they break down into blood sugar. And in order to bring that into our body to be used for energy, um, Dr. Michael Rogers mentioned just before that your body needs that insulin working. Um, and when that insulin works, it kind of pulls that sugar out of the blood, brings it into our body and um, gives us energy to do certain things. And again, when you have diabetes, that can be an issue. Um, the foods you eat will definitely have an impact on your blood sugar. Hey, Carol, is there an ideal diet for a person with diabetes? Um, that's a very good question. I get that a lot. Um, you know, when we look at diets, um, first of all, I don't like the word diet per se. We always used to use meal planning, you know, um, but, you know, diet has been interchangeable nowadays. Um, I always encourage people to eat healthy. OK, um, two kind of meal plans or diets, if you want to call that are out there that are very beneficial for people with diabetes is the DASH diet and the Mediterranean diet. Um, the DASH diet includes more 
<clears throat> sorry about that, more fruits and vegetables, you know, whole grains, lean meats, healthy fats. Um, and that's, again, a healthy way of eating. And then we have the Mediterranean diet, which, you know, many people try to follow, which is, again, similar, but they focus on a lot of healthy fats, uh, your monounsaturated fats, nuts, seeds, more fish, fruits, vegetables, um, less on the animal products and animal fats, things like that. Are there diets people with diabetes should avoid? Um, actually, there is um, one diet that many people try to follow. Not many, but um, you hear a lot is the um, ketogenic diet or the keto diet. You know, it used to be known as the Atkins diet, where people avoid um, all carbohydrates. So basically, they focus on proteins and fats. And really, you know, any diet or meal plan that eliminates any specific food group tends not to be a healthy one. So that's why we, you know, we, we really encourage ones that include um, all the different uh, food groups, your, your fruits, vegetables, dairy products, proteins, lean meats, um, and healthy fats. So it's actually not really a diet. It's more of a lifestyle because the, the ones where you're excluding some food groups, you can't really live like that. Exactly. Exactly. You want to have something that you're going to be able to follow for the rest of your life. Got it. Mm -hmm. uh, Carol, is there a diet that people with insulin resistance or prediabetes uh, should follow? Um, actually, there is. And it's basically everything that I just talked about. Um, you know, definitely when someone is at risk for diabetes um, with the higher insulins, but they quite not have developed diabetes yet, you really want to watch um, your carbohydrates and choose healthier ones. Um, you want to usually cut down on your calories, choose more lean meats, fruits, vegetables, um, things like that. So like I said, the DASH diet, the Mediterranean diet, or, um, or, or any kind of lifestyle that includes healthy foods. Um, you know, I always tell my patients, um, shop around the perimeter of your grocery store because that's where all your foods are. Uh, great suggestion. When we come back, we'll continue to talk with Carol about healthy eating. You are listening to Complete Health with Dr. Mike Rogers. Complete Health Dentistry. Have unused dental insurance benefits or flexible spending left for 2018? Did you know that dental insurance benefits and flexible spending have a use it or lose it policy? 2019 is right around the corner. Benefits not used this year do not carry over to next year. Call Dr. Michael Rogers today to schedule your appointment for a wellness visit, treatment, or a new patient experience to take advantage of your unused benefits. Call 570-253-5000. Appointments are limited and filling up quickly. Visit us on the web at completehealthdentistryofnepa.com. Complete Health Dentistry, transforming your health for a lifetime. Welcome back. Carol, as we were discussing before, there's diets for uh, the insulin-resistant person, the pre-diabetic, the people with diabetes. Uh, one of the questions I have is you hear people saying, well, fruits and vegetables have a lot of sugar. How is that any different than, say, foods that we eat? Right. Um, you know, fruit. you're exactly right. Fruits and vegetables do have sugars, um, but they are natural sugars, um, which, again, if you eat too much of them, it can affect your blood sugars, but they are a much healthier type of sugar slash carbohydrates that we talk about. Um, your fruits and vegetables, you know, have a lot of other nutrients that your cakes and cookies do not have. They have fruits, um, sorry, they have fiber, they have vitamins, minerals in there that is so important to your health um, and for people with diabetes. Now, does fruits in that respect also uh, take into account like raisins and things that are dehydrated or do we have to worry about the dehydrated fruits having more sugar because the volume's less? Um, that actually is a great question. Um, so when you talk about things like uh, raisins or prunes, things that they pull the water out and the sugar's more concentrated, the, the biggest thing with that is portion size. 
okay, and not eating as much of those foods, having more whole foods, f- um, fruits and vegetables that have more water in it as opposed to de- dehydrated ones. Now, also, you had talked about you had talked about carbohydrates and how that breaks down into s- simple sugars and can affect you. Is there a way we can count carbs or, or look at that and control ourselves with that? Uh, Yes, your carbohydrate intake has a direct impact on your blood sugars. So if you have a food that has a label, um, the best way to look at that is your total carbohydrate on your label. Um, Choose ones with less added sugar in them. um, And then, uh, you know, kind of count those. One number that we look at a lot with carbohydrates and People with diabetes is 45 grams. So like 45 grams of of carbohydrate per meal, okay, is a good number to look at for carbohydrates. And, you know, carbohydrates, you know, we talk a lot about fruits and vegetables, but carbohydrates are your breads and your starches and your rices, um, you know, even rice mixes, which we try to avoid because of the sodium content. Uh, Your dairy products, milk and yogurt is considered a carbohydrate. Um, So those are the ones that we want you to, encouraged to eat because they're healthy ones, but also watch your portion sizes of those. Carol, is there a recommended time when a a person should test their blood sugar before meals, after meals, multiple times during the day? What's what's recommended? Okay, there are, you know, different recommendations. Uh, You know, when you talked about type 1 and type 2 diabetes, um, someone with type 1 diabetes would check their blood sugars more often because definitely the foods that they're eating more so the carbohydrates and the the sugar foods that they eat, they have to take a certain amount of insulin for that. So someone with type 1 diabetes may check their blood sugars six to eight times a day, okay? Um, Individuals with type 2 diabetes, um, usually, you know, maybe one time a day, two times, you know, a lot of factors involve cost with the, with the test strips. But um, the time of day, some people check it first thing in the morning, Um, Some people check it after they eat. Um, And again, based on when they check it, depends on what their results should be. So for example, if someone checks their blood sugar before they eat a meal, the guidelines for what their blood sugar should be, should be somewhere between 80 and 130. And that's based on the American Diabetes Association. And then if someone checks after they eat, they would like a blood sugar less than 180. So it's about two hours after they eat, um, and if they check their blood sugars less than 180. So, mm-hmm. Carol, I have a question for you. What about foods to avoid if you're a diabetic? Uh, yes, that that is a good question. You know, we do encourage people with diabetes to eat less processed foods um, because processed foods tend to have more, you know, added sugar, added salt, added fat. Um, so again, you know, the more you can cook from scratch, um, the healthier your foods will be. Um, uh, sugary beverages, you know, that is really important. Soda, um, you know, juice is a good food to have in moderation, but, but juice also has a lot of, uh, natural sugars in it that can raise a blood sugar. So, um, you know, soda, soda pop, um, you know, things like that are things you want to avoid. Okay. What about diet soda or sugar substitutes? Right. Um, you know, the guidelines, when, when we make recommendations, when I say we, whether you be a dietitian or a diabetes educator, um, we have to look at scientific evidence. Um, right now, there are sugar substitutes out on the market, and there's many of them, um, which have shown to be okay in moderation based on the research. If people want to go more natural, you have your stevia or xylitol, which is a sugar alcohol. But when it comes to diet soda, we, we really recommend to drink less of it, okay? If someone has to have it, maybe one or two servings, and a serving is an eight ounce can. It's not the 24 ounce bottle. Just because it comes in one bottle doesn't mean it's one serving. Uh, yes, point. so yeah. yes. So, you know, I encourage water a lot. Milk, low fat milk is a great option um, for a beverage to drink. Or again, using something like stevia or even cut up fruit in your water to give it natural flavors. Okay. Dr. Rogers, what are your recommendations for our listeners regarding diabetes and overall health? Keep in mind, reversing diabetes is possible, but it takes commitment to a lifestyle change. Maintaining the health of your gum and your gums in your mouth is paramount. 
meal planning, healthy eating, and regular exercise, lose some weight. As it's surprising that if you drop seven to ten pounds, it not can it can not only improve your heart health, but it could move you down the scale of the diabetes with your diabetes. Uh, if you lose say seven percent of your body weight and you're pre-diabetic, it can take you away from diabetes. So things like that, it's surprising. Any of these recommendations, though, you should start with a discussion with your physician and make sure you've got them on board. Uh, have a plan if you're diabetic with your physician, what to do with uh, elevated blood sugars or low blood sugars. Do, do they need to be involved in that or do they want to be involved in that so that you can control this um more aggressively, for lack of a better term, get physical, start exercise routine, start slowly walking 30 minutes a day. It doesn't add any extra equipment. Just get out there and walk is something. Check your blood sugar before you eat or after you eat, just like Carol was talking about. Keep a snack available just in case you do wind up in a, a low blood, blood sugar state, um, and especially if you are exercising. Change your diet. You know, Carol went into going around the perimeter of the, the, the supermarket. Uh, eat healthy fats, decrease carbohydrates, eat more fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, lean proteins, limit alcohol, limit smoking or stop smoking, limit sugar, sweets, and carbonated beverages. Thank you, doctor. Before we go, Carol, I know you have a special diabetic event coming up. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, thank you for asking me about that. I'm very excited. So on uh, November 4th, which is a Sunday, from 1 to 3 at Lador Conference Center, um, the entrance would be off the Owego Turnpike. Pike. We have the Diabetes Tasting coming up. The Diabetes Tasting is a great event that we've had you know, for many years where individuals come, we have a guest speaker that's going to talk about diabetes. We have food, you know, diabetic friendly food that individuals can take, uh, taste that day. And then we also have exhibitors. Um, I know um, Dr. Rogers, you're going to be there. Um, they're going to have information on their table on diabetes. Um, we also have individuals from the hospital, from home health, uh, health services. We have the YMCA coming. We're having eye care place coming. Um, so nutrition. So we're going to have a lot of good information for individuals to, uh, uh, you know, find. And if you can, we ask you to register by calling 570-253-8990. We just need your name and phone number and the number of people that uh, you're planning to attend. Thank you, Carol, so much for joining us today. You've been listening to Complete Health with Dr. Mike Rogers, where we are transforming your health for a lifetime. Complete Health Dentistry, transforming your health for a Hey, this is April from Complete Health Dentistry. Let Dr. Michael Rogers and his team transform your health for a lifetime. We are a complete health dentistry office, meaning we will never look at our patients as just a tooth. We will do a complete health history, do a very thorough examination of the mouth, oral cancer exam and periodontal exam, which is uh, the bone health of the patient, the bone that holds the teeth in the mouth. And we will look at that whole picture on how everything affects the patient or the person as a whole, not just, oh, you have a cavity in this tooth, you need to get it filled. We look at how that bacteria in that cavity may be affecting their other health issues. Visit Complete Health Dentistry of NEPA or call 570-253-5000. Complete Health Dentistry, transforming your health for a lifetime. Let the transformation begin.